Hi everybody, I'm Andrea and welcome back to my booktube channel to everybody that subscribed while I was gone. Thank you so very much. Um, a lot has been happening both in my personal life and at the world at large, especially in this country. So I'll be leaving a few links down below about organizations and places where you can donate um, to support black lives. And I'll be briefly touching on why I was gone <laughs> because I think it's important to mention um, and create awareness for. But I thought I'd come back with a gold old-fashioned book review. I haven't done one of these in the longest time. And I want to talk about one of my favorite new releases of this year um, by one of my favorite authors. And that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia. And I hope y'all enjoy. So Silvia Moreno Garcia for me is one of those authors that is an auto-buy. I will literally buy anything she writes. I think the way she kind of does hybrid mixes of genres and changes them and makes them really unique to her own writing style is the best thing ever um, and Mexican Gothic was no exception. Mexican Gothic is a classic reimagining, no sorry, Mexican Gothic is a reimagining of the classic Gothic novel. Um, so if you go way back, way back when, when you think of like the first Gothic novel, I guess you can think of Castle of Otranto on Toronto, the on Toronto book is what I call it. But there's, you know, the spooky home, weird things are happening, ghosts, right, of course. And you get all those elements um, in Mexican Gothic. So uh, this book is about a young socialite called Naomi, and Naomi is just a party girl. She loves living her life. She likes being free. She likes partying, drinking, all that kind of fun stuff, and she wants to go to grad school for anthropology, I believe. Um, and she has a cousin, and her cousin uh, sends her this very mysterious letter one day asking her to save her. So her cousin marries this wealthy, like, white guy, <laughs> um, and he whisks her away into this, like, mansion, this gothic mansion called the High Place. Um, and she hasn't really spoken with much to her cousin since that, you know, initial marriage. Um, and, but she is alarmed at the, at the tone of urgency, at the, at the urgency that her cousin writes her in. So Naomi cuts a deal with her dad. She says, fine dad, I'll go and check up on my cousin if you can let me just go to fuck off and go to grad school basically. And her dad's like, yeah, sure, go ahead. So she goes to High Place and is immediately creeped out and I would be too. It's basically like this British style colonial um, home in the middle of Mexico and it's based on a real town in Hidalgo, Mexico and it's called Mineral del Monte or Real del Monte and it's a small mining town like in East Central Mexico and um, so immediately she's kind of thrown off of everything and she's immediately suspicious but she meets um, this guy who turns out to be her cousin's husband's nephew um, and you can tell that there's going to be some kind of tension between them and there's going to be something more um, but then she goes into the main house and she meets everybody blah 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 she meets her cousin's husband called Virgil and he's supposed to be this very handsome guy in my mind he looks like um, Dan Stevens in Downton Abbey but I was talking to some people and they were imagining like Army Hammer. But like basically that type of um, very basic white man face, that is what he looks like. <laughs> so she's thrown off at just the oddity of it all and she sees her cousin and she almost doesn't recognize her. She's not the same girl that she once was, right? She kind of, it looks almost like this house is like taking the energy from within her. Um, so Naomi immediately sets to try to solve the puzzle and find out what the hell is going on in the house because it's weird as hell. There's definitely like this very atmospheric um, quality to the book and I think a lot of her writing itself and a lot of books that she's written um, really capture the feeling of the setting as she does it once again here. It feels like it's rotting and decadence is the way I would describe it. Um, so very kind of traditionally gothic in that way um, and my mind kept going to Crescent Peak by Guillermo del Toro if you've seen the movie um, but the house really reminded me of that especially um, near the end when certain events happen and the horror factor definitely gets <laughs> 
expanded on. If you're somebody that gets scared easily, maybe don't read this at night because there are certain imagery in this book that will have you questioning things. <laughs> so while in high place, Naomi starts getting these really weird, vivid dreams that are just really unsettling and um, honestly trigger warning for sexual assault within these dreams because as a reader yourself you can't even you can't really distinguish like what's the dream and what's actually happening because the house itself just has this really like almost world within a world feel to it so you don't really know what's happening really until the very end i've always admired the way Sylvia really creates a very very delicate balance between tension and plot within her novels and in mexican gothic it is no exception um the way the second act kind of leads into the third and everything is kind of revealed to me was so satisfying to read and one of my favorite things that she does is really write really good complex female characters and protagonists um and i love how layered they are for example you have naomi who you know is this kind of rebellious girl and you have her cousin Catalina who is portrayed to be a little bit more timid and um, reserved but those aren't the only facets that they hold their only role in the story is not to just be you know the swashbuckling savior of the story or the damsel in distress they really own up to certain moments and show the complexities behind their characters one of the creepiest aspects of this book is the way uh that colonialism and eugenics comes into play and without spoiling too much of it um it really explores the dynamics of when European settlers kind of invade a place that isn't theirs and try to um, change it from the inside out on a really slow burn. So slow and so subtle and so gaslighty that the people being affected almost don't perceive or see it, you know? And we see that kind of personified in this relationship between the original inhabitants of High Place, so Virgil, his grandpa, and the family versus Naomi and Catalina who are kind of this new blood that is introduced. I really do think that this book makes really interesting commentary on the fetishization that white men sometimes have with communities of color and how um, the intrigue some people or some yeah some people have with these communities is entirely based on their you know perceived inferiority and exoticness um, and I think Sylvia did a really great job at kind of untangling that and writing it in a way that is so so unsettling and so creepy but entirely true because it is just an example of what actually happens in reality and I think that the the way these aspects are kind of unraveled within the novel is what really cements it as a true horror book you know I've seen a lot of discourse online like on bookstagram and stuff about how some reviewers were saying that this book wasn't necessarily in the horror genre or it wasn't necessarily Mexican enough um, and I like entirely disagree with that. I mean, that's one of the reasons why it's so terrifying. Like these people of color and their bodies are being exploited for white gain and then disposed of like they're nothing, you know? Um, and that's the reality so many people face and continue to face. So some quick things on this book. Um, this f family is composed of the, the dad figure who is called Howard. He is a literal creep. Virgil, again, creep. Francis, um, he was going into the creep route, but he didn't entirely reach it. And Florence, who is the niece. Now, when we talk about like, I guess, passed down cyclical toxic traits this family is that personified they are a unit and are really close in 
more than one ways, and there are mushrooms involved. That's all I'm gonna say. To make a long story short, this is just a great a gothic book that takes place in 1950s Mexico that deals with race, with paranormal elements, with uh, toxic masculinity definitely, and toxic families, and just how all those things go deeper than you may think, and how roots of not only families, but of beliefs can uh, rot the entire, entire area beside it. Like there's that one saying, one bad apple. Okay, imagine that, but they're all bad apples. <laughs> and really quick, I just wanna say thanks to Del Rey, the publisher who gifted me this arc after I literally slid into their DMs and was like, can I have it? And they were like, sure. Um, so throw your shot. <laughs> but yeah, that's Mexican Gothic. I, I really liked it. Um, Sylvia Mena Garcia's writing style is interesting to me and I really love it because it is both blunt and powerful but also very poetic <laughs> and I know that doesn't make sense but I feel like once you read a book of hers you'll understand exactly what I mean um, and some people are a little thrown off because of that because it's not necessarily uh, as flowery or like long and flowy as some may enjoy within um, the genres that she usually writes in so like fantasy, historical fiction, um, here, horror, noir um, so watch out for that if that's not something that you enjoy, but I really enjoyed this book and I hope y'all give it a chance to check it out. I always talk about SMG because I love her and I think she's criminally underrated, not only on booktube, but on bookstagram and on book Twitter and at like the world at large. I think she's so great and I think her novels should be adapted into like movies, TV series. I don't know. Here's a graphic of me making a fake Netflix screen because I love it so much. Anyways, this has just been me going on off about Sylvia Marina Garcia. I'm gonna shut up now before like she puts a restraining order on me. Um, and I'll see y'all next time. Bye. So as I was saying, um, this pandemic is still happening. It's still very real. Um, and a lot of people are being affected by it. A lot of people are losing people they love to it. And unfortunately, um, my family was one of them and I had someone really close to me, a family member, be diagnosed with COVID-19 and at the end of the month actually pass away from this disease and I just wanted to tell y'all um, to remind you all to stay really cautious and safe and I know things are opening up and people want to revert back into the way they were living you know pre this pandemic and you know there's nothing I wish more than you know doing that being able to hang out with my friends and do all these activities and just not have to worry about the pandemic but unfortunately that's the reality that we live in and it really worries me to see so many people so nonchalant about something that is so devastating and I wouldn't want anybody to you know go through that but really honestly um, it's not a joke it's not a hoax it's not some government plot to like I don't know bring down the United States it's real and it sucks and you have to remember that you know wearing a mask and wearing hand sanitizer it isn't just for yourself it's for everybody around you um, and yeah I just wanted to say that it feels weird again like I said to just make a book to video and not talk about the giant elephant in the room that it lives within my head um, and yeah, I hope you guys again are staying safe and I will see you next time with a new video. I had a bunch of videos pre-filmed in April, but I did not post them because of what was happening. Um, but hopefully I will edit them soon and bye.